My name is Michal Friedlander. I'm a pianist and in 2015 I started with another colleague a music club in a refugee home here uh, in Berlin, a program for German children and children of refugee background, which we called Nachbartöne. What we built there was a choir and the children coming from different places in the world, speaking different languages, had to learn uh, to sing together in one language. This current project, which you are presenting in this film, is a continuation of Nachbar Töne. Um, this time we are approaching a much wider audience through uh, a digital platform as well as live lessons in the classrooms. And our aim is to introduce to, to children in German classrooms today different cultures through different languages and specifically through singing in these different languages. If I learn to sing in the other's language, I learn to know the other better, to accept him, to learn his culture and to learn to respect his culture. <laughs> The idea is to present in the classroom a lesson plan on languages. So we would have, for example, a song in Turkish, a song in Hebrew, a song in German, Yiddish, Spanish, and so on and so on and so on. We then provide the classroom with the song material, uh, a playback, words, and some background material that they can then incorporate into their learning. And Having looked at all this information, having heard all this music, they are then invited to direct, sing, interpret their own version. And then they send us back this, uh, this answer, which we can then post on our digital platform for other classes to look at when it's their turn to, to do such an experiment. The idea is that this is really a dialogue which we are developing. <laughs> With the Zauberlehrling, we are trying a, a different angle. This time the language is obviously German. And the idea is that the music, in this case composed by Mr. Talbal Shai, adds immediately another dimension to the learning of the ballad. Es ist natürlich toll, wenn man Balladen von den klassischen Dichtern jetzt von Goethe und Schiller und Fontane noch mal den Kindern nahebringen kann, weil sie eine Geschichte erzählen, die sie auch packen kann. Und plötzlich ist diese Ballade nicht mehr irgendwie was Altes, Verstaubtes von vor 200 Jahren, sondern es ist was Lebendiges, eine Geschichte, die auch heute hätte so passieren können. Und insofern bin ich sicher, dass man in der Schule verschiedene Szenarien oder Bilder zu dem Text malen könnte. Dann könnte man natürlich Bewegungsabläufe damit machen. Dann natürlich das Singen, Frage-Antwort vom Chor und Solisten. Und könnte ganz leicht auch Kinder mit einfachen Perkussionsinstrumenten wie Dabuka oder Cajon dazu bringen, das Lied auch rhythmisch zumindest zu begleiten. Man könnte ganz viel rumspielen und gucken, dass die Kinder einfach Spaß dran haben und nicht das Lied zu sehr intellektuell begreifen, sondern wirklich äh, spielerisch. Die glatte Schärfe. Ich finde, man muss jetzt nicht ganz viele Balladen auswendig können, aber ich finde, man könnte eins, zwei auswendig lernen und halt auch einfach Namen wissen, von wem die sind und worum es ungefähr so geht. Also vor 200 Jahren so Balladen, das äh, ist schon was Besonderes. Ich finde es auch gut, dass man die noch im Gedächtnis hat, weil man auch daraus, glaube ich, viel lernen kann. This latest project 
uh, when he, he, he showed it to me, I, I fell in love with it immediately. I find it so original and inspiring and somehow um, I had immediately the, the ideas of how one could translate it into work in the classroom. Als die Idee war mit dem Balladenladen, so heißt dieses Projekt, habe ich auch an Michal gedacht und an ihre Arbeit, gerade in Zusammenhängen mit Flüchtlingskindern. Weil sowas zu lernen, was sich reimt, greift sich natürlich viel besser ins Gedächtnis, auch gerade wenn man die Sprache nicht kennt. Und ich finde das ganz toll, über Gedichte zum Beispiel einen Zugang zu dieser Sprache zu finden. One aspect that is very essential to the program is that we, we aim to have these workshops not only in schools, in, in classrooms, but also in refugee centers where children who are really new to this country uh, can introduce to our concept. And, in the, and I want to stress that it's not just that we want them to sing in German, we want also to learn their language and learn their songs and maybe make connections to a culture which they feel like they've left behind. But maybe through a project like ours, they can also feel that this is something that is still ongoing with the help of all these tools that we have today. Uh, all the many uh, artists we can reach uh, digitally, we can actually make uh, connections and bridges and people can participate in a program like Treffpunkt Musik from all over the world not only Berlin, not only German, Germany, it can be really a, a really international uh, project. This is part of Treffpunkt Musik. We bring together cultures, we bring together children from different backgrounds through music. <laughs>